Hey, hey, God bless everyone, Sammy D, in the comfort of my mobile here where I worship and praise and seek the face of the Lord. This is one of my sanctuary, my place, of course, the car when I go to church to worship the Lord. But I just love to get away, and so I sit in my car, I have me a cup of coffee or something, and then I just read the word, and I hear from God. I give God a phone call. God has a phone. He has a wireless phone, courtless. He started that. You want to know God's phone number? Okay, let me give it to you. Jeremiah 33, 3. Jeremiah, the old prophet, the Old Testament, 33, 3. God said, call upon me and I will answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Now notice what he doesn't say. Call upon me. I'll put you on hold. Call upon me. If the line's not busy. Call upon me. I might answer you. Call upon me. Perhaps I'll pick up the phone. He said, call upon me. Definitely I will answer you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? You can call the president. You might not get through. Chances are you won't. You can call some celebrity in Hollywood. I'm going to call Oprah Winfrey. Or I'm going to call Michael Jordan or uh, LeBron James or somebody else. You might not get through. They may put you on hold. They may just catch you off. But God, the creator that's above everybody else, says call upon me. He's challenging you and I. And he said, I will answer you. You're going to get through. He can pick up the phone and answer you. Remember that number. Jeremiah 33.3. 3. Call upon him. And let me just share this word with you quickly and briefly as I'm just meditating on God's word. You know, there's a lot of questions that I hear in the body of Christ from leaders from Christians themselves, like, what's my calling? What's my purpose? What's my gift? What's my talent? What's my anointing? And there's a lot of answers and a lot of confusions. So I want to solve that mystery and that problem for you. God has one requirement. I'm going to show you what it is. So you can go get the titles. Go get them. You want to be licensed? Get the license. Get the ordination. You want to be called reverend so-and-so, apostle, prophet, or prophetess, or evangelist, or apostle, whatever you want to be called. Jesus said, I'm just a servant. You all can go ahead and get those titles if you want, but I go with what Jesus said. He said, look, I didn't come here to be served. I came here to serve because I'm a servant. Now, people call them rabbi, king of the Jews, the Messiah. They call them that. But he said, I'm just a servant. I'm here to serve. So the mystery, basically, is people want to be recognized and they feel good about that. In the job side, at least where I work, they wanted to go up the ladder, lateral movement. And sometimes they cut your throat, stab you in the back to get that position and to get that title. In our churches today, I know of uh, people that knocked on the pastor's door. Pastor, can you license me? And they ask for licensing. They want to be recognized. I, I knew one particular person got a uh, credentials for chaplain, volunteer chaplain, and uh, said, look, I, I don't want nobody calling me reverend. That's just a title. But then one day that person was introduced as their name, let's say, is uh, uh, Susie Q. And she said, no, no, I'm Reverend Susie Q. So they want recognition. They want titles. They don't want to sweep the church. They want to be up in the pulpit. And they want all these positions. This is what God says to the children of Israel, to us, through the prophet Micah in the Old Testament. Listen to what he said. This is God. This is in the prophet. This is in your missionary. This is in your pastor. This is God the creator saying to us. He says, he has shown you, oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? Now I looked up that word require. Basically, it means a particular purpose. In other words, God is saying, what's your particular purpose? 
Can you find out what your particular purpose is instead of with the titles and the credentials and the recognition and the degrees? What's your particular purpose? He said, I've shown you. And what does the Lord require of you? What's your particular purpose? You can sit around and ask yourself. What's my particular purpose? Got the title, got the office, got the credential, got the degree. What's my particular purpose in life? This is what God says. I've shown you what does the law require of you. <laughs> but to do justly. Mark that. To do justly. To be a just person. To treat people with justice. We can say that to the government, the nations of the world, to do justly what is right. You remember Jesus told the story in the book of Luke chapter 18 about the widow that went to the judge. He was an unfair judge, very mean. And she knocked on his door and said, listen, I got a re request. I need something done. I, I, I need uh, my needs met. And he says, man, I can't, come on. Now, here's a judge that's from the hood. He said, man, come on, what you talking? Man, get away from me. I ain't got time for you. And he pushed her away. Now, she could have very easily said, Jesus is telling the story. She could have said, yeah, I can't get through. Forget about it, man. It's over. Like many of us say, when you go to the Lord for something and the devil gets in your way or people tell you it can't happen or your own mind tells you, man, forget about it. He ain't going to do that for you. And so we stop. Jesus told the story. He says, yeah, she went back. She said, no, I, I ain't giving up. She went back the next day. Who is it? You who? It's you again. I got a need. I need you to meet it. He pushed her away again. She kept coming back, coming back, coming back. She didn't give up. And the judge says, man. This lady's wearing me out, man. <laughs> what does she want? Listen, give her what she wants, man. Get rid of her. Talking about nagging. She got it. Now, Jesus is telling the parable about praying, about knocking, it shall be open. Seeking, you shall find. Asking, it will be given unto you. Don't stop, man, till you get it. You want your son to get saved. You want your daughter to come to the Lord. Stop using drugs. Keep knocking on heaven's door. You want a miracle of healing, of prosperity. You want your business to grow, your family to grow. You want your church to grow, whatever it is. Keep knocking. You want this government, you want this nation to prosper. This nation to be protected. You keep knocking on heaven's door. God will give it to you. That's what he said according to his will. He says, man, that you do justly. Do justice. Be a blessing to people. Help people. Look at the need of people. You know what I did at 4 o'clock in the morning? Now, listen, I'm not saying this to boast. I'm saying this to host. To let you know that God is the most. And I did a favor for somebody. I I'm just happened to get up. Maybe the Lord told me to get up. I looked out the window. 4.30 in the morning. It was about 4.30. And uh, it's ultimate size parking. You got to move your car from one side. So I see this gentleman across the street. He's got a big old one of those uh, pickup trucks. Here, I'm going to show you, try to show you a picture of it. You can see that's a pretty big truck. Now, he was on the other side of the street. And he had to move his car because his alternate alternate side parking. I was on where he's at now. So I looked out the window and I said, this guy's looking for parking. He had his car on, the lights were on. He said, he's trying to get some parking over here. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna give him my side and I'll take his side. So he doesn't have to move his truck and he can go to work. Now it's like 4.30 in the morning, it's winter time. Who wants to get up at that time and go outside? So I put on a little jacket, came out, I went out across the street. I said, listen, you need parking, I'm gonna move, take mine, and I'll take yours. And we switched. And he said, thank you, brother. I gave him my parking. That's doing justly. I could have went back to sleep, said, that's made up for that guy, I'm going to bed. I could have done that very easily. And he would have stayed there looking for parking, got to work late, don't have to take his truck with him. He said, man, I didn't want to take my truck with me, man. Thank you, brother. Did me a favor. So I did justly. And that's what we're talking about. 
That's what God requires of you with the title and the credentials and the position and the, oh, I'm so and so. And you're preaching up a storm, singing, do justly to someone. That's what God requires. Number one is justly. Number two, show, listen, to do justly and to love mercy. Love mercy. Be merciful. You know, God is merciful to us. I've met people throughout my walk with the Lord in 42 years that have not shown mercy. God's showing mercy to us, but I know people that once you make a mistake, they're ready to come down on you with a sludge hammer. Bam! They don't show mercy. I know people like that. I know where they came from, the garbage can. God brought them out a long way. They don't show mercy. They're ready to judge you, throw you out of the church, condemn you, point a finger at you, talk bad about you, criticize you, lampoon, lampass, and expose your, your areas of your life. They don't show mercy. And God says to do justly and to love mercy. Be merciful. You remember the story of the two that went to pray. Once was a, 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 a rabbi. He was like a Pharisee. And the other one was a, a, a sinner. And he prayed and he said, Lord. The first one, the, the just person or the righteous, self-righteous person. I'm so glad that I'm not like these other people. And I'm special. I'm anointed. I have degrees in our terminology today. The other one said, Lord. I'm a sinner, man. He was a public. He said, I'm a sinner, man. I, I, I repent. I got nothing. And Jesus said, that one there, receive more mercy. Show mercy to people. Be merciful. See, people that are hurting, that are down and out, or even in the church that they sin, don't expose their sin. Go to them. Cover their sin. Talk to them. Try to win them over. Show mercy. I've been to the mercy seat of God. I know that I've gotten mercy. And so I want to show mercy to others. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he says, be just and then love mercy. And this is the third one. I like this third one more than that. the other ones. Oh, they're all the same. But I love this one here. He says, to show mercy and to walk humbly. Woo walk humbly before your God. You know, in today's culture, being humble is not a popular thing because we're arrogant. We're full of pride. So much information and knowledge and modern technology. And so we got our heads up here. We say, man, you don't know who I am. I'm so and so. And we want to show pride. But the Bible says to walk humbly before your God. Stay humble lest you fumble and stumble in the jungle and there'll be a rumble. Stay humble. See, I told a friend, see, God, God works with you one of two ways. You either come in peace or you come in pieces. <laughs> Stay humble before the Lord. Stay humble in life. Listen, I, I don't take no credit for that. Jesus did it. I, say, I give him the glory. It was him that went to the cross. Hallelujah. It was him that was crucified. It was him that was buried. It was him that rose from the dead. And when he rose, he took me up with him. Because I was dead in my sins. And he had mercy on me. And he forgave me. And he cleansed me. And I walk humbly before the Lord. I stay humble in his presence. Crying out to him. Knowing that I can't do nothing without him. Knowing that in him I can do all things. Knowing that I, 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 I have nothing without the Lord. I stay humble before my God. I don't care what knowledge you have. You got more degrees than a thermometer. You can play 55 musical instruments including the harmonica, the violin, and the tuba, and the uh, uh, bugle. But when you come before God, humble yourself and stay humble. Put your arrogance and your pride behind you and stay humble in the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, my friend, but I like this scripture here in the book of Micah. He said, God has shown you. God requires of you. Not the degree, not the title, not the anointing. Those things are good. I'm not against that. Praise God for that. But besides all that, that you do justly, do justice to people, that you show mercy and love mercy. I like to be merciful and that you walk humbly before your God. Hallelujah. And if you walk humbly, God will lift you up. God will lift you up. God will lift you up. If you come to serve, he'll make you a leader and others will follow. I heard somebody said a good leader is one that can step on your shoes without messing up your shine. 
You think about that. Father, in Jesus, now I pray for anybody and everybody that's listening to this message, Lord, that you teach us how to walk in your presence justly and loving mercy and staying humble before you. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. <laughs> Woo -wee, amen. God bless you. All right. I love you. In the Lord. Dios te bendiga. Dios te guarde. Dios siempre tenga su mano poderosa sobre ti. Te levante y que respire y mande su soplo a tu vida para que tú estés sanado y ungido, transformado, libertado, levantado para la gloria de su nombre. ¿Cuánto dicen amén? God bless you, man. I love you in the Lord. Amen. Jesus.